Uh, and today I am honored. I, I just, <laughs> I freaking love my cousin dude. And I cannot wait to this whole COVID crap is over because we need to kick it. We haven't had a good kick it moment yet. Yeah, we haven't kicked it since like the family reunion like seven eight years ago man. <laughs> right exactly and i'm like we grown and i need to be kicking it in california so i cannot wait till all this is over so we can get together and have conversations like this in person and stuff but um you were top of mind when i was um envisioning what i wanted to do from now on on my facebook page and have these conversations um, because I know that I've had these conversations with you and I have deemed you as my cousin, a good guy. I'm sure maybe there are women who would disagree, um, but we all have our moments and stuff, but, uh, you are somebody who has good insight on the heart of a good man. And so that's why I invited you to this conversation. So I just want to dive into it because you were already like <laughs> talking about the comments that are on the page right now. So I'm in this group on Facebook. And this is where I get a lot of the topics. Um, and it's supposed to be a Facebook page. It's called like single strong women or something. I thought it was gonna be a Facebook page of women doing the dang thing uh, in their single season and happy, but it's actually a Facebook page of women with a lot of problems with men. And I'm not here to judge anybody, I've been there. Um, and I know that I can help them, but unfortunately I'm not allowed to advertise in that Facebook group, but whatever. So I just watch what's going on. And I'm like, oh, this would be a good conversation. Oh, this would be a good conversation. So when I saw this, it just, it, it, I was like, dang, man, is, it, is this where we are? So the topic was, somebody posted, if you are a single woman who is dating and looking for Mr. Right, what is your biggest dating challenge? And you see the comments, guys lie. They got drama, they cheaters. They have no standards. They ain't, sh they da 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 da, they're weak. And so I wanted to have this conversation with you um, because I don't agree, but I want to hear why you think women say this about men. And is it true? Are there just no good men anywhere on this planet anymore and life is over? So what now? Uh, no, it's not true. There's good men out there. And then I also want to preface this with good is subjective. You know what I'm saying? What's good to me or what I consider being good may be different for you, may be different for somebody else. It's all relative, you know what I mean? And so I can't necessarily say, oh, you know, this person's good. Because a lot of guys like to say, oh, I'm a good guy. And they just use the fact that, oh, I don't cheat or, oh, I have a good job or, oh, this makes me good when it's so much more than that. And so <clears throat> to dive into this, though, like these comments are more so to me, women taking personal experiences and using it to create like this generalization of all men so like for example you know this lady she's like you know guys have three or more children with three or more women and i'm not dating you know nobody with baby mama drama especially when she's a manipulative insecure whiny like that you're getting super specific now you know what I'm saying? like so this this actually happened to you and because it happened to you that means every guy that has multiple children is comes with a bunch of baby mama drama and that's just not true um furthermore just because you have multiple children doesn't make you a bad person <laughs> like now you know i know women somehow just like you know it kind of shows you know reckless behavior or stuff like that and that may well be true but we also have to look at things like like for me for example in my 20s i was um more or less a scumbag you know what i'm saying <laughs> But should I be defined? Should I be defined by that for the rest of my life? Am I not allowed to grow and change and become a better man? Like I did this in my 20s, so I have to be that for the rest of my life? No, you know what I mean? And it doesn't mean that you can't reform and become better and grow and heal and things like that. Also, you know, uh what I see is um uh a lot of and no way am I taking accountability away from guys because guys do need to hold themselves accountable. Guys do lie. Yeah. Guys do have drama. But everybody has that. Like, that's not <laughs> that's not specific to men. Like, that's not, oh, only so, men have drama. Only men cheat. Only men lie. Like, that's not, yeah, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's funny to me because I feel like 
and I'm not a man. And so this is why I'm going to ask you this question. I feel like women are the only ones who do this. We, we think in absolutes when it comes to men, because I was treated bad, uh, abused, cheated on, whatever. Um, that means all men are bad. And we have to get out of this mindset because nothing is absolute. Everything in this world it, on any topic or discussion is not black and white. It's not, you know, whatever. So do men also, when you guys are having conversations around dating and women, do you guys say this? Like, all oh, women are bad. I, she sucks and she got a baby daddy. She did. Do you guys also like drag us like this in your conversations with your friends? Like, I know you can't speak for every man, but. Not in general terms, like not as like, oh, every woman is this, that, and the third. Like me and some of my friends, when we talk, we talk more in specifics. Like, for example, if a woman did something that I found to be just like ridiculous, I might say, man, she did this. This is retarded. Like, why would she even do this or whatever? But I don't say, oh, she did this. All these women be doing that, this, that, and the third. Like, no, this is just specific to this person, this yeah. situation. You know what I mean? And it's also important to note, just because somebody does something that you don't like doesn't necessarily make them a bad human being. <laughs> like right, I think right, a lot right, of times right, people yeah, yeah. oh he didn't communicate this or he didn't say this or she didn't do this so now she, all, she's just an all around fucked up person like no it's just hey maybe they're lacking in this department or you know also it's also important to note that our environment in which we were raised our experiences it shapes how we do things and view things and so it's important that we have some compassion for each other and try to be a little more understanding and not just get so like worked up over something and not understanding the whole situation surrounding it. You know what I mean? So, so and in order to understand how people were raised, who they are, how they are loving, how they respond to things, you have to get to know who people are. So I know you and I have talked about this a lot. It seems like when girls, we get asked out and again anytime I talk about women girls I'm talking about myself to what I would be doing prior to 2017 2017 and pre Rika uh, you know before I did all of the work that I've done now what was this girl this is why I can talk about this but we get so excited when a guy asks us out like we're already oh my god he could be the one he's so fine oh my god we're gonna have 3.5 kids and our two dogs and we're getting so excited to now we're already sleeping with this guy two weeks in this and that and the third and then we're starting to see all these red flags and then it ends up being this dude he's a liar a cheater no commitment he's drama he's full of this you could have figured all of these things out before you even really got serious with him. I just feel like people are not um, dating to uh, build friendships. They're dating to just, I had to hurry up, especially for girls. I got to hurry up and get married and have these kids. So, cause that's what people do. Like, do you feel that way too? Like girl, we just get so excited. Do guys get so excited? Or yeah, I feel like people in general, but I do see it more so on the women's side than the men's side, but really both is, they put too many like expectations and unnecessary pressure yeah. on dating situations. Like one thing, like my therapist, you know, she told me, shout out to Mara. She's amazing. Uh, <laughs> and I do follow her on Instagram. She's dope. <laughs> she, she's dope. Um, one thing she told me was just enjoy the moments, man. Wow. You know, don't like when you like somebody asks you out you go out on a date people are all like oh you know they already thinking about the wedding and th just have fun if you have fun with it and you don't have any of these like exuberant expectations and you're not putting all this pressure on the situation if the person happens to ghost you or they turn out to not be what you thought they were it's no loss on your part as far as like oh you know i got myself all worked up like yo, this person was in my life for this portion of time. I enjoyed it. I had fun and it didn't work out and I'm going to move to the next person or whatever. Like, but people get too invested and emotionally invested and their feelings invested 
too soon when they should just be having fun. Just have fun, man. Yeah. Yeah. I teach my clients, um, your data collecting. He is not right. He's not Mr. Right or Mr. Right now. You met him two weeks ago. <laughs> Look, I, you know, I love boxing. I love boxing. Yeah. Uh, mostly everybody that knows I love boxing. The first couple rounds when you're fighting someone, you're just getting information. You may throw a jab out there. You may do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but you're just collecting information. What do they do when I do this? What do they do when I do that? What do they do when I throw this punch or whatever? You're getting information in the beginning. Then later on, you can start putting it together and you can start coming up with a game plan and then you can start throwing your combos. You can start fainting and all this other stuff. I won't get too much into boxing, but um, <laughs> no, I love the you say that because you said data collecting and that's really what it is like. I like to put everything in boxing terms because for me, like boxing relates a lot to life. And like you said, you're, in the beginning, you're just meeting someone, you're just getting information, download that information. Hey, when I talk to them about this, how do they respond? Um, we had a disagreement. How did they handle that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We went out on a date. How did they treat the waiter? How did they yeah. treat the valet guy? Like yeah. all of this stuff is super important because down the line, that's going to tell you what type of human being they are. Yeah. And for me, it's about, um, so what I teach in, in Single You Academy, um, you know, I help women discover their worth so that they can stop tying their identity to men and stop being a people pleaser. So if you're, if you're, if dating is supposed to be data collecting or data collecting, however, I don't know how to say that word. I know we all say it differently, but if you're supposed to be dating and collecting data, you also have to know what you want then. So for me, when I was dating in you know, 2017 and before, I didn't know that, you know, it was just like, oh, I'm dating because that's what people do. But now mm -hmm. one of my top things is um, I, I love to, to test, not, not test like me, maybe I will sometimes, but I just want to make sure he's slow to anger. Why did you join Single You? I joined Single You because, um, like majority of women, they've had hard relationships. Um, I am a single mom, and um, I want to be loved, and I didn't know how. And it was also my issues, 
and Rika actually helped me figure out how to deal with my issues, how to set boundaries, um, raise my standards, and not settle for anything less than that. And you know, now I'm ha I'm happy person by myself, just raising my son. So, yeah. I, Yay! I needed help, and she was there. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, would you tell someone watching right now um, who was, was you eight months ago to join Single You? Heck yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just, I didn't, I, I expected this to be a long journey to figure out who I am, my self worth, what I wanted. And six, seven, eight months into it, I was like, holy crap, here I am. I yeah. got it. <laughs> um, I still use my skills that I learned through single you every single day. Yeah. And it's, I love that. I, I still grow as a person every single day, even though I'm not in single you. Yeah. Um, I loved being in it because you had a whole group of women that aren't going through the same thing as you, but pretty darn close. Yeah. And they were just there. They support you. They yeah. know what you're going through. They know your, your emotions. They know everything. So. Love it. Love as, it. As a single mom, yep. I struggled, I guess. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I, uh, I had, um, I ended up going to court. Um, so with my son's father for custody and visitation and all that fun stuff. Um, I, I was just over the whole visitation thing cause he wasn't doing his part. And Rika actually had another woman come on that was going through the same thing, her and her husband divorced. She had two kids and she helped me through the whole visitation thing. So it's not just about your relationship. It's beyond that. She also helped us with um, building a, um, I'm going blank now, <laughs> building a, um, to save money, oh, yeah, budget, yeah, yeah, budget. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah we budgeted. Yeah. I was at the beginning of the year, I was eight grand in debt from, you know, paying for a lawyer and life and everything. And here I am as a single mom, debt free. And I brought a brand new 2020 car. <laughs> Look at Did that. you hear that, Linnea? Like, I.